So far this week in the science behind the farm, we've looked at the issue of soil and how that's the foundation on which to build a sustainable food and farming system. And then yesterday we looked at the issue of plants and whether from seed to table, soil and seed and nutrients work together to create lovely tasty plants that we can enjoy as people. But on a farm like ours, it's not just people who enjoy the plants. Because we're an agroecological farm, we integrate livestock with plant production. And so for example, any waste plants that we have, in this case, you can see the pigs around me enjoying leftover Brussels sprouts and cabbage leaves that just aren't really fit for human consumption, but the pigs are, are tucking into them as, well, sort of second breakfast or a mid-morning snack. And we also talked yesterday a little bit about the whole issue of artificial selection in plants and how we get all of these different varieties from an original garlic plant or an original lettuce plant. But we see it even more clearly in livestock because the ancestor thousands of years ago of this particular, these particular pigs was a wild boar. And wild boar in many ways look very different from the pigs that we have on the farm today. We have black pigs, we have white pigs, we have spotty pigs, we have stripy pigs, we have pigs of all colors, shapes and sizes. And what's really interesting in food and farming generally is that artificial selection builds on the natural selection in nature, but it introduces humans into the mix. And so we get different breeds of livestock for different areas that are adapted to particular climates or particular needs, whether that's cows for producing milk or cows for producing meat or a dual purpose breed that is a bit of both. And so you can see that here in front of me with our pigs. The black ones are actually pedigree large blacks and that's quite a rare breed, quite a rare bloodline in fact. And that was a, a breed that was developed in East Anglia uh, and Devon in England, but it became quite rare and often with rare breeds like that they go through what's called a genetic bottleneck whenever the numbers become low and that can lead to a lack of genetic diversity within the gene pool. So what we do on the farm generally, apart from the odd litter of pedigree pigs, is we cross purebred rare breed sows with a large white sire or boar, which is a faster growing, more commercial species. And that gives us these white ones. So the white ones, their mother was a Gloucester roll spot. Their father was Desmond, the large white. And although they're roughly the same age, you can already start to see that the white ones are getting bigger, quicker than the black ones. And in genetic terms, that something really interesting is going on. It's called hybrid vigor. Because the large blacks have uh, had a limited gene pool at some point in the past, whenever you cross two different breeds, you get a broader diversity of genes, which leads to healthier animals, and in our case, pigs, that grow quicker and faster than the purebreds. And we don't just see it in pigs, of course. We see it in all the animals in the farm. We see it in our goats, which would originally have come from scruffy wild goats somewhere in Asia or Africa. We see it in our geese who would have come from wild geese as well. And we see it particularly with our dogs, which as Springer Spaniels look absolutely nothing like their ancestor, the wolf. And this whole issue of artificial selection, which we see so clearly in food and farming is a really interesting way of seeing science in action. Science in this case as a mix, not only of nature, but also of human nature. Here at Jubilee Farm, we farm in an agroecological way. And agroecology is the science and practice of farming with nature, meaning a diversity of genes species and ecosystems on the farm. And what that looks like in practice is that we really try to imagine the farm as an ecosystem and just as a wild ecosystem, say in the nature reserve here at Jubilee Farm, you have different species occupying different roles or niches, eating particular foods, hunting in a particular way, foraging in a particular way. And because they're all doing those complementary but different approaches, they can all share the same space. And it's the same on a farm where we integrate livestock and plants. 
so that the fertility we capture from the animal manure and the bedding we use in the compost, which eventually becomes the fertilizer for growing plants here in the market garden. But it's also seen in the ways that the different animals occupy different niches on the farm. So for example, the goats here are grazers. They can eat grass and you can see them busily munching on the hay behind me, but they're primarily browsers. So they're really good at trimming hedges, uh, eating weeds. They have a very broad diet. They will eat pretty much everything. And so they keep the grass short in the fields grazing. They keep the hedges short as well. And then we have different animals performing other roles. So the pigs, for example, they are diggers. So they like to rotivate and cultivate. And we actually integrate them into the market garden. So not only in the polytunnel where they're preparing the ground over winter for the growing of next year's vegetables, but also out in the market garden where at certain times of the year, we rotate some pigs into a section, allowing them to clear any grass, eat any weeds, turn the soil, and of course, fertilize as they go. Other animals like the geese are grazers. And what's interesting about the geese is that legend has it that if you keep geese with goats, geese will eat the snails in the cycle of a parasite that can cause a lot of problems in goats called liver fluke. And by keeping geese with goats and them eating the snails, they disrupt that life cycle and therefore reduce the incidence of liver fluke. And that means healthier goats. Now that's an old wives tale. I'm not sure that there's any scientific proof that it actually happens, but a lot of science actually starts out like that. It starts out like hunches. So there may indeed be some truth to it. And we actually do keep our geese with our goats some of the time, but it just hasn't been validated scientifically yet, as far as I know. So you can see here all of the different ways that livestock and plants are integrated on an agroecological farm. Part of the diversity of nature here at Jubilee Farm and certainly part of the science behind the farm.